good to go. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sue. All right, welcome to this session on augmented reality, Earth and space. My name is Celia Popper, and I am the project officer for CESA program in based in Victoria. And very ably and happily assisting me today is Sue Carter, our project officer in the Northern Territory. You might notice a difference. I've got the fleece on and she's just in a t-shirt. We're always very jealous of Sue. Um, so the, for those people who don't know, the Computer Science Education Research Group is based at the University of Adelaide and aims to promote research, scholarship and program delivery in the fields of STEM education. Over the past eight years, we've created online courses for educators, digital technologies resources and a national lending library of digital technologies tools to support the, the teaching and, and learning of technologies, including the new AR and VR tools. We'd like to thank the Australian Government Department of Education for making this session possible. Uh, I'd be really, really happy if this session is an interactive session. If, if you're in a situation where you're able to have your cameras on so we can um, see that we're responding to real people, that's a really great um, benefit to us. We understand though sometimes you're in a position where you don't want to have your camera on, that's fine too. And thank you to those people who might want to introduce themselves in the chat. We might let you know, let us know where you're coming from and maybe perhaps even what, you, what you're teaching. So we'll start by, I'd like to start by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the country and place throughout Australia and the deep feelings and attachment and relationship of the First Nations Australian people have to country and place. We pay respect to the value and value First Nation people's connection to land, sea, sky and waters and their rich and enduring contributions to education. I'm on the land of the Bunurong people in South Gippsland in Victoria, and I've only recently moved here. So I started with some simple research and found out that the traditional language was Boon Murong. Gambai, which I've got images on on the screen, was a valuable resource in helping me to find out more about the traditional language. They are working with regional language centres to develop a map of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander languages that reflects the names and groupings favoured by the local communities. It might be a site you'd like to explore for your own context. I certainly learned something by having a look. So in the session this afternoon, we intend to do a few things. First of all, we would like to review emerging technologies, AI, AR and VR. We're full of acronyms today. Um, as the focus of this session is on earth and space, we'll look at how emerging technologies is currently being used in the area of engineering and space exploration. We'll then outline the connections for teaching within the Australian Curriculum Version 9. And this will be, this will be followed by looking at the lending library kits that our um, CESA organisation has and looking at how you can use those in your classroom uh, along with classroom ideas. So let's start just checking to see where people are from. So we've got Andy. Excellent, teaching STEM in the middle school and ha having a new VR lab being presented, fantastic. We'd love to hear more about that, perhaps if we have a chance, so it'd be great to hear. So let's start by having a look at emerging technologies. Um, we know, we all know that emerging technologies are changing the way we live, work and play. Going unplugged is, is possible, but it's not the reality for most of, most of our daily lives. You may have heard of artificial intelligence, virtual reality, augmented reality, drones, automated vehicles, humanoid robots, virtual assistants. In 2020, the Computing Technology Industry Association uh, identified the top 10 emerging technologies, as you can see on the screen. Some may be familiar words already, already, but we suspect there may be a few new words in there as well. Biometrics, perhaps, or serverless computing, natural language processing, maybe not be as familiar to us, to us than others. So let's start with augmented reality. AR is a technology that superimposes information onto a real world environment when viewed through a camera lens of a mobile device. AR requires a trigger image, like a QR code or the ability to track a surface, scanning an area for digital content. 
Some examples uh, they are that you might be aware of are perhaps one of the most common and most popular, Pokemon Go, which uses location tracking and mapping technology to locate an AR Pokemon, or perhaps even the IKEA app, where you overlay furniture into images of your own home so you can visualise what will suit where and even adjust the colours to see what works where. Merge cubes are often a common uh, use of AR in schools, and we'll unpack those. Perhaps you've already used some. Whereas virtual reality is another emerging technology, and this is experienced through a headset when the real world you're standing in is replaced by a computer generated virtual world. You're fully immersed and to interact and move through the virtual world of images that are computer generated. The VR glass or cardboard, whatever it is, um, covers your eyes entirely and shuts out the external world to offer that fully immersive experience. Interaction can be experienced through handheld, can, can be uh, exchanged through handheld controllers as well. Some products you may have heard of include the Oculus Quest, PlayStation VR and Microsoft HoloLens. VR is currently used in various industries for training. The Digital Technologies Hub says that VR is a 3D generated environment which can be highly imaginative or a realistic simulation of the actual world. Artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is the ability for a computer or a robot controlled by a computer to do tasks that are usually done by humans. It is the simulation of human intelligence processes by machines. Computer systems are being developed to perform tasks normally requiring human, human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making and translation between languages. Examples you hear of, um, you may hear about are chess, like chess playing computers through to self-driving cars. Have a think, have you enga engaged with AI today? It's probably, you probably have. Voice assistants like Siri or Cortana, Image recognition to unlock devices, a chatbot, an app like Plant Snap or speech recognition, recognition are examples of AI that you may have used. So let's hear from you. What has been your experience with, with AR? Have you perhaps used it? And Sue's going to pop up a poll in a moment. Um, have you perhaps used it in your personal life with the real estate app or shopping or in gaming? Uh, have you seen it used in agriculture or in health? Or have you used it at school? Are you using it already um, with MergeCube perhaps or other apps? Have you been to professional learning opportunities like this before? Or are you a nice clean blank slate and you say, what's AR? So Sue's going to pop up a chat, a poll. There you go. I've launched the poll. Thank you. I'll give you a moment to reply. And you might be able to do more than one. Yeah, I made it multiple choice, so I'm hoping it does mm. Well, this is interesting. Uh, it looks like we've got five, six, seven, eight, nine results within there. So I'm going to end the poll now. And I'm going to share those results. And can you see those results? Because I'm not sure what people can see. Um, but it looks like professional learning opportunities. Um, everybody, oh, good. Um, everybody's had an opportunity to do some professional learning. Uh, it looks like three out of five people have had some experiences in school, and one person's actually used it in a personal sense as well. So it looks like the group that we're working with today will have some experience. Excellent. So we're hoping you'll be able to give us some feedback as well and some other ideas for um, the ideas that to add on to what we've got to offer to you. So we always need to know why, why do we need to know about this and how is it actually, how is the tool that we're trying to use being used in the real world? So an example of the of augmented reality is this MRO Air app, which uses AR to help mechanics identify and locate elements of an aircraft and be guided to the installation and service of those particular parts. By pointing the app at the particular elements, they, the, the um, service person receives exact advice on that element that they are looking at through the 
augmented images and text. So I'll just play a short part of this. I'm starting. So, in so Celia, can you turn your microphone off first before we watch it? And Thank you. just that's okay. And just for people just to have a think about, well, what does this actually mean if we're showing you this video? Um, what can you see as potential within it, particularly from a perspective of education? Every mechanic chooses his own tasks assigned to him. All information, processes and tasks are combined in one screen. No more paper and no more hassle. needs a hand, he can use the team assistance button. A call will go out to all available team members to ask for assistance. Whenever a mechanic needs a hand, Whenever a mechanic needs help from a service center or a senior specialist, he can use the remote assistance button. A video call is activated between the mechanic and the service employee on duty. Ordering parts has never been as easy as one click, simply because all data is available in the same system. MRO Air. Increase efficiency by 30% and reduce errors by 50%. Of so I don't know about you, but when I first saw this um, uh, film clip, I wasn't quite sure what they were doing. And then as my understanding of AR and AI started to kick in, I could actually see, oh my gosh, this is actually showing him what it is that he needs to do on the engine of, of a plane. And I'm just wondering, what kind of things people might be thinking about in terms of how they could see this used within their own lives or where are we taking our children as students in terms of careers and skills and future it would be great if you could maybe turn on your your microphone and share some of your thoughts uh, on the video that we've just seen or you can type something into the chat I was trying, trying to think of a uh, something that I need to describe to how to do because I'm a visual learner. So I'm trying to think of that, um, even like changing the tyre on a push bike or something, how you could, um, if someone could create one of those and the individual parts could be done. Fixing the photocopier is the it's perfect Absolutely. Example. That's exactly what came to my <laughs> mind, how to fix the photocopier at, at oh, school. Yes. That is so true. I love that idea, Jane. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't now, that's a really good point, Chapter. Does this reduce the skills needed by the human if it tells you what to do? Yes and no. Um, you still need to know what you're doing. You still need to be able to locate the things. You still need to have the skills to be able to do all those changes and so forth. But it's almost like you've got this virtual assistant that's helping you along the way. And I also look at it and think about the, the human who creates the AR, 
has to be an amazing communicator and an amazing ability to be able to create an algorithm, basically a story, a series of steps to help that person through and see all the potential pathways that that person might need when they're actually trying to do the task. So it's, a, it's an amazing set of skills in that way. Okay, so thank you. That photocopier idea is perfect. I might actually start working on that one. <laughs> and and, and spit trying to explain how to do the photo, fix the photo. Yeah, copy. and then there's another point about if something goes wrong, who is responsible? A great, great question because then it starts to bring around the ethics of what we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it, and the responsibility. Yep. Mm. Um, I guess is it any different to someone who's written an instruction manual that you're reading on paper? perhaps you could say that it's a slightly it could be flawed but it could be less flawed than paper than a paper instruction it's um yeah the ethics is a very big issue there so that's a really good question as well all right we're of time let's move on thank you for that so although AR is a relatively new in education um, technology and education it has the potential to engage students and enhance their learning particularly of abstract and theoretical concepts it also allows for experiences that may be unsafe or not feasible solution in real life. It also has the power to encourage collaborative learning and peel back the layers of virtual objects and superimpose images and information to enhance the application of knowledge. This poster was created as part of the National, Art, National Intelligence and Emerging Technologies in Schools project. And uh, in its entire, this is just one snippet from it, its entirety can be actually downloaded through the, down, the Digital Technologies Hub. And we'll definitely give you a link to that hub that I'm referring to a few times today, later in the session. Okay, so today's focus is on the use of one of our lending library kits in a classroom situation. We aim to strongly link to the curriculum outcomes and provide practical ideas to make the most of the technology whilst exploring the content area. Uh, if you could you give us a, in the chat, um, could you or in the reactions, could you give us a thumbs up or down as to whether you're familiar with our lending library kits or if in fact you've borrowed them before? Um, so never heard of have you heard of them before? or you've borrowed them before, we've got a few ticks. That's the yes, they have, a few thumbs up. Is there anyone who's never heard of them before? Not that I can see. Okay, so most people are aware of them. I've borrowed, excellent, terrific. So we're speaking to the conversion. So I'll go fairly quickly over this section just in case and because we are recording this for other people as well. So if you've not explored it already, you'll see that our free lending library resources can be viewed from this page on our website. It's recently changed, so please keep an eye out for updates. Um, one thing that some people aren't so aware of is that along with all the equipment, there's also a series of lesson plan ideas for all, in all of our kits. They can be used for ideas and adapted in the classroom. And they're great as they actually use the equipment, but in many cases, they go beyond that and highlight the possibilities for students to become creators with, with the technology they experience. So I think Sue's just popping the chat the link into the chat for you so you can find that most up-to-date information. You will note on that that our digital technologies kits at the moment are not available, um, but the ones to do with the artificial intelligence um, project are still available at the moment. So the lending library that kits that we'll be looking at today um, will be focused around the, the augmented reality in space kit. And you'll see that on the site there, it has a description of the contents. Um, you'll notice that we've got now with four merge cubes, we are constantly trying to update these kits to make them the most valuable in, for, this, for, for you in schools. Um, so the augmented reality kit now will come with four merge cubes and you'll see the value of that in a moment when Sue starts talking about merge cubes. Uh, and so we have the augmented reality in space kit, um, each of those kits comes, each of our kits come with four iPads as well, with all the apps that we're talking about in this session as well. Sue's already presented a number of webinars in the past around merge cubes, um, and we'll leave you the link at the end of the session to our YouTube channel, which has those. So we're talking about the contents of the augmented reality in space kit um, and how to use those in your classroom. So 
We've identified a number of suggested thinking routines listed on the screen, which are designed to ensure that the tools are used for educational and good sound educational purpose by the students. So the images here represent the contents of the space kit, the various apps and the various tools. Um, you'll see, and we'll uh, unpack these as we progress, um, Merge Cube kits, books with books with AR triggers and, and variety of apps, as well as some uh, those, the other little things called, I'm going to have to come to them. Uh, so we're trying to, to uh, present today a way to make sure that these tools, however amazing they are, are used within a sound um, environmental educational process. So to obviously, to connect to the educational value, we first need to look at the connections to the curriculum. Today, we're looking at version nine of the curriculum, which we understand not all schools are yet um, enacting. However, it is a good time to start being aware of the version nine of the curriculum. At the top of the screen, you will see the strands and the substrands of both the learning areas, science, technologies and science. And underneath the circle diagrams that, sorry, try that again. At the top of the screen, you will see the strands and the substrands of both learning areas and underneath the circle diagrams that represent technologies and science. There are very strong correlations between technology skills and science by inquiry substrands. When designing and planning AR activities, these areas could be looked at together. The content for earth and space within the science and understand science understanding of sciences can be connected to the knowledge and understanding substrand of digital systems. We'll skip over the curriculum details quickly, but you can see that there are links as we progress. So on the following slides, we've taken screenshots from version nine um, science. This one is year two. You'll see we're not intending on um, covering all these elements, but we're just showing you the connections of the following activities um, to, to the curriculum. So there are some for year two. There's many more in year six in the earth and space and science and understandings. And Sue, you're most welcome to jump in here if you've got some uh, stronger comments to make. Uh, just that um, you can see how it fits in with your content descriptions around your knowledge and understandings of science. Um, but along with that is also your science as a humour endeavour. Here in the NT, we refer to it as a she task. And um, what happens is students are actually looking at, so it's one thing to know and understand about science, but what does this look like in the real world? What are scientists actually doing? How are things really developing? Uh, and now with so much happening in the space um, area, uh, this is a really good time to be able to look at some of those science as a human endeavour uh, around space. Perfect. And I guess it's the same with your, your digital technologies that we've got some skills uh, within there, those processes and production skills, and they uh, correspond very closely to our inquiry skills in science as well. So if we're going to be doing some planning around science or some planning around digital technologies, try and look at them together and see how they cross over because then you can start to develop tasks that are looking and achieving skills in both learning areas. And the digital literacy um, obviously requires, works around requiring, um, acquiring data from a number of different sources. And you'll see as we progress through the different tools, um, they're all about variety of data and getting it from different sources. All right, just aware of time, we need to speed up. Okay, so the first item from our kit we'll unpack is the mini solar system from, um, from the organization called Astro Reality. The mini solar system, as you can see um, from, um, from the images there, is a set of physical three centimetre models of the planets. It comes along with a companion app. These miniature versions of our solar system have detailed textures and vivid colours and provide an engaging tactile experience in the classroom. So even without engaging with the app, even just having a look at the, um, the, the models, um, there's a bit of engagement going on there, a bit of information to be gained. The app lets, teacher, lets students scan each planet's unique QR code and view facts about them. The QR code is printed in the brochure 
in the pack and each planet can be paired with up to six devices so students can collaborate in small groups and, or, and accommodate the entire class. Students can discover facts such as um, in, uh, facts that, such as the planet's atmospheres, composition, and even the potential for life. It enhances the physical experience by adding additional features of the, to the planets digitally, such as the atmosphere of the Earth or the rings around Saturn. Okay, let's so remember to mute myself. And so we'll just turn our microphones back on, Celia. Um, so that's a, a really good, just a very short um, film clip just to show you. There are actually two sizes. There's the larger solar system and then the smaller one. And in our kits, we actually have the mini, the smaller balls. Thank you for that reminder. Oh, this should be a big science says you're on mute. Okay, so as we mentioned, what we're trying to do is to say, well, there's this fantastic tool. How can we use that in the classroom? And in this particular case, the, um, the makers of, Astro of this uh, kit have a educator's site um, where <clears throat> they have some ideas as to how to use it. And their idea with this one is to focus students on particular elements of the information that they're getting from this app. Um, in this case, they suggest perhaps a Venn diagram is used. So uh, after a bit of time to play, which because of course we need that play time, um, then providing students with the task of actually looking for particular information that they're going to um, uh, try and find and work out how to, how to um, separate that into different similarities and differences between planets, for example. Obviously, that's totally up to the teacher as to what you're trying to get them to observe as to what you would put as their elements on their Venn diagram. Okay. Are we going too fast? Um, no, no. I no, just that's... wanted to see whether there's any questions or. So I don't have any questions. I've been putting some um, links in the chat. So the last lot was the Astro Reality STEM Education site, uh, and then their Google Drive that has different sets of um, ideas in it as well. Thanks, Sue. Okay, so another element of the kit is the I Explore into Deep Space book. So it's a hard covered book and the, in our kits there's four, four of the books and it comes along with an app and the idea is that you read the book and you um, get the much lots of information from the actual text in the book but then it comes along with a, uh, a trigger, a QR code um, in, within the book content that opens up a whole, whole new world. Once again, I'm going to mute and Sue will remind me to put it back on again, not forget again. Just a very quick summary. Want to explore the mysteries of the galaxy? Now you can with iExplore into deep space. By downloading the free companion app, you can take a guided tour of the solar system, featuring detailed models of famous space tech, such as the Hubble telescope. Access in-depth schematics in X-ray mode. Explore uncharted terrain with the exoplanet rover. Take a star from creation to supernova. You can even open a black hole in the middle of your room. I explore into deep space where the galaxy is at your fingertips. Now, now I just wanted to say that um, some people find it hard to see how is this augmented reality? Where, where is this trigger in the book? And there's, I think, eight in this book, I know there is in the brain book, 
And this particular image you see on the screen um, of the app is the image that's in the book. And that's what you actually have to scan in the book for the augmented reality to actually appear out of the book like you can see in the image. Excellent. Thanks, Sue. So that's kind of like your activation trigger. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so as we said before, there are lesson plans associated with many of our many of the apps and tools in the kits. And the one we're going to unpack now is the one that's called our solar system in AR and code. Um, you'll get a printed copy of this when you um, get our kit, um, but it's also available for download from the website, and you can see that there. So we're going to unpack on the next few slides an outline as to that, that lesson plan, which was written by Rebecca Vivian, our team leader. So the lesson plan here is the app. I'll read this one. <laughs> an example of the lesson plan we've prepared is one called Our Solar System in AR Code. In this lesson, students learn about our solar system and how planets orbit around the sun with augmented reality. Students collect data through their AR experience and, and within their own research and use the information they create to create their own solar system simulation using Scratch. And can we have a click for the first image? Yeah, thank you. Yep, that's that one. So students, in this case, the suggestion is that they are uh, uh, do the next one. Another click. Yep. Thank you. Great. The students are organised into small groups, each with one book and one tablet. They may lay this the book on this table and uh, share the, the various text, and then use the AR codes. Using a notepad or digital document, they record as much information as they can about the solar system or a particular element of it as they can, noting their observations about the size, colour, and speed of the planet. Students can then examine other pages in the book to find out more information. You might call this the immersion stage, where they're just trying to get as much information as they can. Then, uh, in preparation for their scratch animations, students collect data about the solar system for their project. They will use the information from the book and from other sources. So there's a suggested uh, link to a certain website there called Windows to the Universe, which has lots and lots of data. Then using a scratch animation, uh, using a, to, in order to create a scratch animation, they create a um, storyboard. Remember, I'm just summarizing the whole, the, books, the lesson plan that is in much more detail. So they design their, their uh, animation by using a storyboard, using their facts, and then they create their animation using scratch. So they've been through the process of immersing themselves in the, um, in the information through the AR experience, as well as other sources, because we should always have more than one source for information, creating a design for a, for a project, and then creating the project itself. So that lesson plan is, um, oops, sorry, I went too yeah, far. Then. Jump back. Jump back, yeah. That lesson plan is all in much more detail um, in our documentation. And I think, Celia, too, earlier we talked about some thinking tools like the See, Think, Wonder or the KWL chart or maybe okay. doing Venn diagram or something like that. And those sort of thinking tools you might want to bring into these lesson plans as well um, just to enhance the students' understandings. Okay, now it's Sue's turn. So Merge Cube, I'm wearing my Merge Cube Ambassador T-shirt and um, I'm not sure if anybody's used Merge Cubes at all. Um, you can tell us in the chat. If you could, that would be fantastic. So this is another exciting tool that's uh, in our kit, uh, new to this particular um, uh, kit. And um, on the screen there, you've got an example of how it's working. And sorry, I'm just going to pull my notes up. I've got too many screens here open. Um, so Emerge Cube, if you haven't seen one before, it's a foam, uh, black physical foam, soft foam um, cube that has silver um, markings on it, like um, overlays or inlays on it. And um, that's the trigger 
on the, from the iPad. So what happens is you open a particular app, you point it at the merge cube and your augmented reality experience um, occurs. Has anybody had an experience with merge cube? Oh, five new messages. And you, I and see. Yes, he uses them with the primary school students. Right. Excellent. And it is. It's perfect for primary school students as well. So uh, moving on to the next bit. Oh, yep. So I just wanted to outline three apps that go with the Merge Cube. There's this red one, uh, which is called Merge Explorer, and it's got binoculars on it. And the reason why the binoculars are there is to give you that impression of your students exploring. They're putting on their binoculars and they're exploring around and looking at things. And, and in this case, we're looking at science simulations. The hollow globe one that's green, that has like a cartoon image of the earth on it because all the information within that app is all around earth and what's going on um, within the earth. And then the blue one with the glasses, that's object viewer. And what that enables you to do is see three dimensional objects that can either be on the merge cube or you can stamp them into the real world as well and engage with them. So it's important to understand these three separate apps that all work on the merge cube uh, but they all have a very different purpose. So the one I want to start with is uh, Merge Explorer. And as you can see at the top of the screen there, uh, the uh, Galactic Explorer science simulation is happening. So we've opened up Galactic Explorer, one of the simulations. We've placed this over the Merge Cube and you can see that the person is turning the Merge Cube in their hand but if you do hold it still, you can still see the planets moving around the sun. You can make it larger and smaller. You can click on a planet and some information will appear about that particular planet. So A, it's about information sharing, but B, it's about seeing, like we saw with um, year two science before, the students have to understand where the earth is in terms of the solar system. And this gives you a beautiful example uh, like a, almost a concrete example of what that looks like. There are five other um, uh, simulations that you can use, uh, which are all to do with space or the solar system or the earth systems, um, and, and they're really worth exploring. Now, what do you do with these? There are some activity plans on the merge dashboard that you could also access and um, there are some ideas there. And what I really like is that there are specific questions that you're asking the students and things for them to think about, but also to explore. The next one, what's the next one? Coming out as soon as I find the button, there it is. <laughs> it's okay. This one's the object viewer. And so I found three space um, um, uh, collections. Uh, that are relevant to this topic. One is called our solar system. And what it does is it shows you the different planets and gives you information about the planets. And um, you can put the planets and stamp the planets around. Students could order the planets if, they, if that was one of the things that you wanted them to do. So this goes hand in hand really with what we were looking at with the Galactic Explorer before. There's also one on space science, and I just noticed that there's that James Webb telescope um, right at the end there. So they're adding to their collection all the time, and you can find out more uh, about these particular uh, items. There's also one on phases of the moon, and again, that's something that comes into our curriculum where students need to understand the phases that the moon has, but also the effects of the moon on the earth. Uh, for instance, there were some teachers talking recently about how does the moon have anything to do with the tides? Because we have really big tides here in Darwin from seven metres going down to 0 0.1 in November when we have king tides. And it's a really good way of being able to explain to people about how tides and the moon work. And that third one that I was talking about, this is relatively new this year. This is the Hollow Globe app. 
Now, this is specific to things on our earth. And so there are 12 topics within this one that you can explore with your students. And I think what's really important is this is NOAA and NASA uh, real-time satellite data that's used in these simulations. They give you stunning views of the earth, but they also enable the students to look at satellite technology and data and how things are changing over time. And Sue, did you want to mention the um, that you can use the cube or you can use a headset with these as well? Well, you can use a headset, but with a headset, you then need a mobile device that goes in the headset. Yeah. These you also, a cardboard, for example, that would work. Yep, you could use a Google Cardboard as well. Uh, but you can also use this in 3D mode. So you don't actually have to have a merge cube to make this app work. There is the 3D option as well. And actually the other ones have the 3D option now. That's a, a new thing in the update. Excellent. So let's get back to how to use this in the classroom. There's so many, so much um, information there. How do we get students to focus on what we want them to focus on, which is our intentions? What they're going to be learning so we thought and we, we have got a few different um thinking tools here all from the project zero or from harvard and they've adapted some of them slightly and of course you can pick and choose these depending on your we expect you would pick and choose them depending on the students that you're working with what level of thinking they are up to and what you're encouraging so let's say for example if they were using one of those merge cube tools you might give them a see think wonder tool that focuses them on their focuses them to to actually articulate their observations about what they're looking at. You might ask them to focus them on one particular part, one particular planet, or one aspect of the planet, or of the solar system, or any particular thing that you're focusing on. Then get them to do the I think to connect their observations and ask questions, and then get them to encourage to encourage further questions and to do the I wonder. Um, I'm sure you've all heard of these tools before. But we're highly encouraging their use in alongside these tools so that the students are actually focused. Another one, very common, the KWL structure. Um, they could also use so what do they, so they articulate at the beginning? What do they already know about something before they have the experience? Um, what do they want to know? So that focuses them whilst they're with it, they're using the tool on what particular facts they're trying to find and they get them to record their knowledge in the, in the L, L column. There's obviously many different structures for this. Um, I've seen it done individually or as a whole class or in groups, all, all, people, all styles work in different places with, with different groups. And another one could be perhaps to get students working on a collaborative data chart. Um, this could be done in a you know, Google Doc or in an Office 365 or even a simple, beautiful old pen and paper sticky notes on a, on a poster, um, having students um, responsible for one element within that data chart, but perhaps say they're looking at a planet each and they have you identify which feature you want them to find. And as a group, they, collect, they coordinate so that they then have the whole series of information. So each student's work contributes to enough to the group's whole understanding. Then that information could perhaps be used to create a classroom display, which could perhaps link back with by QR codes to the document they created um, or any other way that you can be creative in the classroom. But we're hoping that these ideas will structure the students to be focused when they're using the tools. And we're also really welcome if you've got any ideas in your, to pop them into the feedback as well. Uh, so this one, um, we're going to show you a few other apps that are on our I, on our iPad. Um, so this one, Think Puzzle Explore, you may not have heard of as much as some of the others. Um, it's a great one again. Um, so once again, it's similar to the KWL, but a little bit different. What do you know about the topic? Gets them to to record their prior knowledge or prior experience. What questions do you have about this topic? Exposed will allow them to be. Um, to expose their intent, your intended learning and to provide focus to the experience and how might you find out about it. So you might have to ask particular questions or put in keywords. What are they going to be looking for when they're in the, in the app or in, using the device to try and find their information? 
And Celia, I noticed in the chat that there are some questions about the availability of the apps. So <laughs> they are available on Android as well as on the App Store. Yeah. And yes, there are issues around Chromebooks because you can't download apps. No. Um, you have to use things in the cloud. You can use the Merge um, Edu dashboard. However, you're not getting the same augmented reality experience. Uh, and that's why we have four iPads in the kits yeah. so yeah. that it can enable schools to have those experiences. Yeah, it's been a few years since I've um, managed Chromebooks in a school, but I used to manage them and there was the, um, the Chrome store where there were certain apps. And I'd be surprised if um, there aren't, they aren't trying to keep up to date with merge things. Um, thank you, Kelly. I'll, I'd be quite happy to research that and find out that because I know many, many schools using Chromebooks and you don't want to not have access to some of these tools. So we need to do a bit of research on that one. It's a really good question. Okay, so a few more of the apps, and this one certainly you can get on the just on the, on the Chromebook. Um, the final few apps that are on our library iPads, which are relevant to this topic, include the Google Earth, which is a wonderful app to explore virtual simulations using aerial and satellite imagery. The Voyager experiences, which are the ones that I um, put the screenshots off, the Earth at night, total eclipse of the sun and planetary exploration of Earth, um, showcase interactive guides, um, quizzes and layers and can be treated as passion projects perhaps by students. So we don't want everyone doing the same thing all the time. We know that um, students like to go off in their own uh, areas of interest. Perhaps you could let students loose with these areas, but given a certain structure as to how they're going to do it. Um, it was interesting to read, oh sorry, this is the, the NASA app similarly, um, has a space launch AR modules or models and heaps of other information. But it was interesting to read when I was looking for resources on this particular app. I'm not sure if you're aware of um, Common Sense Education website that has um, wonderful reviews. And you'll see in the con there, tons of information, but a lack of direction may overwhelm some kids. So what we, we're hoping that today's session where we focused on thinking tools and activities based around the use of the app, hopefully would overcome that negative um, feedback for about that particular resource because there's so much information there we really do need to direct our students as to what they're using the tool for so the nasa app is also on our um, ipads and i think we're up to almost to the last one perfect timing um, the planets app uh, the planets app is a 3d guide to the solar system which highlights the cycle of one revolution of the earth around the sun there is, you can um, locate planets in a flat view of the sky, in the, in the sky 2D. There is a planetarium style view of the sky in the sky 3D. And there you can, sh it will show times, it will show you times when the planets are visible if you're um, open in your area, if you allow the location services. And it shows a rotating 3D globe of the planets. Um, very, very much connects to the content of the curriculum that we looked at at the very beginning. Okay, oh, great, Sue. So you found some interesting. Some yeah, things. on the Merge Cube, uh, on the Merge website in the support area, they explain that there are different types of Chromebooks. And if you can connect up to the Google Play Store, then you're able to download it. So if, if Kelly wants to direct her tech person into that area, that might help. Perfect. So, uh, yes, so that's what the system that I used to run. People would ask for particular apps mm. and we'd have to push them out to all the, the um, devices that were managed on, on our school system. So, hopefully, that still works. So, we've got 10 minutes to go, and that's perfect because what we'd like to do now, just before we show you some further resources, um, is to check have you got any questions? Are there things that you'd like to add? Um, to what we've been doing. So we, we can hear that there's a few people who've experienced some of these. So a few people said they've used merge cubes in their classroom. Other, this would be great if you wanted to have a chat about the pros and cons um, or the ways you've done, you've used them. So are there any questions? Nothing has come through yet. Okay, that's all right. It might come through later. So we'll just share with you a few final resources. So we've mentioned a few times the Digital Technologies Hub, um, 
and they have an amazing, we'd like you to know about the work that they've got there. Um, if you go onto their website and look for the AI, AR, VR section, you'll find lots of wonderful resources, suggestions for different tools, how they could be used, but also fitting into the curriculum. Um, they also had presented a few webinars, which you can find in their site. So the Digital Technologies Hub. We've got a comment here from Shapter about Wi-Fi access and downloading. And it's a really good point about whether or not you need Wi-Fi, but more importantly, does your school or does your system block access to things? So my experience with the Wi-Fi is that uh, you don't need it for the Merge app, the Hollow Globe app or the Object Viewer. Uh, app because I've actually done it in places without it and it worked uh, however the app needed to be on the iPads to then um, uh, uh, use it um, what was the other one uh, the next question is the... so I was, sorry I was thinking of another app uh, oh, sorry. another another thing the um, using the book using iExplore uh, that too, you don't need Wi-Fi. That seemed to work okay. What I have found is some things that are on the internet, you do need that internet access to be able to use them. And uh, I see there's something about the printed merge cubes. So um, did we have a picture of the printed merge cube? I'm not sure that that was there. I asked in the translation. So, but no, they okay, were so. all right. It's so, yes, a lot of people do use the printed merge cubes and they work perfectly. They're a great maths activity to do with your students. So you've got your flat net to then build into a cube. Um, it's great if you can photocopy it onto light card because then it's more durable than the paper one. But it's also a fun activity for the students to do and take them home as well or to do the net at home uh, and for families to download the apps because they are free. Now, some of the access to some of the simulations and the objects um, are locked because you have to have the paid account. But in our lending library, we offer the option for people to get access to everything. So that is something, another good reason to borrow maybe the Merge Cube app if um, that's what you're interested in. And did you mention the fact that you can make the, the large ones? No, I've got a huge um, cube. There's a net for that as well, but you print one side on each A3 piece of paper and then stick it onto cardboard and, and make a, a large cube. And it's really good because then the students can have iPads and they can actually physically move around it. So you can have more than, you know, it's not a one-to-one -one picture it's a mini to one beautiful okay so so yeah look I wanted to highlight that if you're really into this space exploration area and you wanted to borrow the space kit because that's what you're doing this term or next term today they launched the Australian virtual astronaut challenge for 2022 it's a nine-week stem design um, program and it's based a little bit on Artemis that I'll explain next and um, it finishes up uh, towards the end of November, I think. And then if the winners uh, will go to a Young Space Explorers event in Sydney on the 2nd of December. There are four scenarios that you can choose from. And what your students do is either create a poster or create a 90 second video to do with what your scenario is. So you might choose Earth observation, and that one is uh, with the Milo Institute, and there's more information there. You might choose the robotics one, which is about trailblazing on Mars or on the moon. You might choose home on the moon, which is about how you're gonna live on the moon and what's it gonna look like for you or growing food in space is the other one. So there are different companies that connect to the scenarios to support uh, students in learning about them. So the webinar was today at lunchtime and um, it's available on their website if you miss the webinar. So you need to register for that. 
um, but very worthwhile. And then, of course, tonight is the big launch of Artemis One. I'm not sure if you're aware of what Artemis is, but it's uh, NASA's new uh, next generation of space flight to the moon. There will be about five launches. This particular launch uh, will have dummies on board, no humans. And the idea is that it will power off into space. It's going to orbit around the moon. And then it's going to use some sort of technique that I can't remember where it catapults back to Earth using the energy from around the moon. And they'll land in the Pacific Ocean on October the 10th. So it's a 42 day mission uh, and they'll be testing things out and collecting things along the way. So uh, it's a very exciting time. So if you wanna know more, I will put the link into the chat for people. Um, and this link is for the broadcast live. Um, and for me, it's 8.30. So for East Coast, it's nine o'clock tonight. Okay, so I'm just moving along because we've only got three minutes to go. So, oh, that slide just messed up. Sorry, augmented reality. So this is just a summarising today. We hope we've demonstrated how augmented reality tools can be used purposefully in an integrated approach and achieve a number of outcomes in the classroom. We know that each teacher will assess the suitability of the tools and the content to their own individual students, and we'd love to hear from you if you do experiment with these ideas. Um, although AR is relatively new in technical in, um, education, it has the potential to engage students. So we wanted to, with, um, in many different ways. What we wanted to do here is just to leave you with some ideas that you might be pondering, some thoughts you might have, we might like to think about um, from now on. So if you're using AR in education, what can students do with AR that's different from other, school, other resources and tool, tools? How can AR products add value to my lesson? Does AR offer something that students don't have access to in real life? Evaluate how developmentally appropriate the AR experience is to your students. Does AR allow for students and teaching and for student and teaching teacher content creation? And I'll leave you to read the, the last two. But it obviously raises any new technology, it raises issues and questions. And they might be some questions you might want to talk about with your colleagues when you're introducing these ideas of art whilst you're doing that, coming up with ideas. And other resources. So as I said before, Sue has presented many other webinars. They're all available on our um, YouTube channel, Augmented Reality Using the Merge Cube, um, variety of different, different angles. And there was a deep dive into augmented reality presented by um, two of our other colleagues all available on that channel. And we'll have very soon our Caesar Bites um, unpacking the human body that I did last week and the space kit that we've done this week. So if you get a kit and you don't know what to do with it by watching this five to 10 minute video, it will explain each item. And finally, as was always the way with the professional development, we do like, we very much value feedback and do attend to any suggestions made. Sue's going to pop a link into the chat for a very quick, um, I think it's five or six question web, uh, form. If you wouldn't mind just filling it out before you leave the session today. If you've got the, oh, you have. Perfect. Thanks, Sue. Done. Before I even looked. So whilst you do that, we'll be quiet for a moment. I'll switch it to the next slide. Just to remind you that you can keep in touch. Obviously you are in touch somehow because you found out about today. We should be asking how people found out. And if there's no other feedback after you've filled in the form, um, thank you very much for attending and please be in touch if you have any other questions. We finished on the dot. So Sue, could you turn the recording off, please? Thank you for reminding me. Um, mm -hmm.